D&D players, what's the most screwed up thing you've ever done in a game? Part 2. My party was trying to rally a bunch of gnomes to our side by starting a communist revolution. All the high charisma PCs were quoting Karl Marx, but they rolled really bad. The half-orc barbarian decided to give it a shot, rolled a natural 20. I started blaring the Soviet national anthem on my phone while he said, Krusty Krab is unfair. Mr. Krabs is in there, standing at concession, plotting his oppression. <laughs> yeah! Glorious! Oh god, my group's last campaign was all over the place, but one moment deserves a mention. So me and my party are on the road, a barbarian, a druid, and me the rogue. I'm on my freshly bought horse and everyone else on the cart. We come across a roadblock, so everyone disembarks to check it out. I know where this is going. There's goblins or worse out there. So I give my new steed a slap to go hide in the woods to save him getting murdered by the DM. Of course, what follows was a battle. We win and everything's calmed down. I whistle for my horse to come back when the DM points out to me that I've only owned the horse five minutes. He's long gone, and I'll have to just get on the cart. Can't argue with that logic. But wait, we have a druid. I convince him to turn into a horse and shout him back or something. I don't know how horses communicate. The DM seizes the opportunity. It's a mating call. Oh god. My stallion comes running back in a lust-fueled rage. The druid is frantically trying to turn back to elf form. What followed is probably the best thing I'll ever hear in a role-playing game. <laughs> Roll for penetration. <laughs> no. We haven't played since. TLDR? My friend got buck-fucked by a horse while me and a barbarian watched and laughed. That's just fucking wrong. Obligatory, not me, but friend. Going around in a campaign, found a sentient sword that turned out to be bound to a demon somehow in another plane, or the likes of that. I don't know, while I wanted to figure out more, the party didn't give a fuck. The sword demanded that our paladin would go around slaying women that be absorbed into the sword, specifically one of our enemies, so that she could eternally serve the demon as a sex slave slash concubine for the rest of infinity. Apparently, I was the only one that took up issue with this. Had a GM once who wanted to playtest a new character class, and I was the guinea pig. It was a kind of rogue plus psionic. My randomly rolled key capability slash element was fire. One ability I got was that I could turn any blade weapon into a flame tongue. So I met this established group of adventurers as a start of a new campaign. One character had a real flame tongue, and he boasted that it had saved his life numerous times, and that it was such a unique weapon. My character intervened here and said something like, Rare maybe, but not unique. Look! Pulled his short sword and dagger, emblazoned in flames. He put them away again, went to the ranger, one of those walking tank variety, and said, And there's another one, too rolled a successful deception slash pickpocket roll to draw that guy's sword before he could intervene, pulled the ranger's longsword and let it burst into flames. Look! Probably the worst thing was calling a town meeting in the church, it was the biggest building in town, barring the door and burning it down. The thing that I'm most proud of is more complicated. We were playing a Hackmaster 4th edition game. It was an evil campaign with a few evil-leaning neutrals. My sidekick was a human druid. I was playing a half-orc assassin. Despite not being a cleric, I always played the character as a very devout worshipper of Groomish. We come upon an ancient orc temple to Groomish, and I decided that it would not do to have the place in disrepair. So my character went about cleaning up and doing repairs. It also turns out we had found an important orcish artifact a few adventures back which was activated when it was placed in the newly cleaned temple. As a result of all this effort, I was made a chosen one, which gave me some spell ability. Well, a first level spell is called Ceremony, which is used to ordain clerics. 
As orcs were attracted to the temple, I made some clerics. I then used the combined spell to boost our spell casting abilities. Did I mention the druid sidekick? They have great trap making spells. The rest of the party decided that there was too much orc power growing in the area and the temple needed to be destroyed. Well, it's amazing what you can do with some pretty low level spells when you have time to plan defenses. The entire rest of the party was wiped out when they attempted to attack my temple, so it was satisfying to watch them stumble in the traps and ambushes. After playing with them for so many years, I knew exactly the tactics they were going to use and it was a glorious slaughter. It ended the campaign, but good times. So a member of the party had to go to the local magistrate and my character and another were sent for supplies. One of the items we needed was ale for the dwarf, of course. We found a pub, but we didn't speak the language. The DM rolled and decided there was a huge misunderstanding and the proprietor was under the impression we were looking for troll sex. We procured the ale, but failed the roll to clear up the misunderstanding. I was put in a room with a raunchy troll ready to go. Through a lucky roll, I convinced him I could be a pitcher and he would be catcher. He put his hands up against the door and turned his back to me. I took my short sword and rammed it up his ass, then jumped on his back and continued ass sorting him until he died. We walked out of the pub and never went back to that area of the city. <laughs> I was awarded extra XP for creatively resolving a tricky situation. <laughs> I was playing an elderly halfling monk who has seen a lot of the world. One of our players ran into a spider swarm and was rolling like shit trying to hit them. I rolled really high initiative for the encounter, but spent my whole turn laughing at them. Eventually our rogue and fighter killed the spiders. Was the DM for this, and is the reason for many of my current rules. Player tried to seduce everything including a barstool, gets kicked out of the bar. Tried to seduce random noble, bounty placed on head. Another player was a bounty hunter, successfully KO'd the first guy and was going to bring them in for a reward when convinced to, instead, rob the noble. Party kills noble, but decides to screw over the first player who they trap in a barrel and roll down a hill. First player vows revenge and spends next few sessions trying to assassinate rest of the party. This happens to also be the tale of how I came to realize I didn't really know my friends. It was our first campaign and I volunteered to be DM, putting many hours into developing the plot of a group of young adventurers being sent to a small island with high gray cliffs and a mysterious stormy setting. It was bound to be a good attempt at a campaign, especially considering how I tried to adjust the choices available for my particular friends and their creative choices. The campaign began with a small rowing boat arriving at the foot of some rotten and creaking stairs. The stairs spiraled way up the cliff, and I really dramatized it. They were meant to be humble, worried, and respectful. The old blind man rowing the boat put his hand out in a gesture of payment, and I asked what the adventurers would like to do. We'll take his oar. Sorry? Yeah, we take his oar and push him adrift. It's foggy and stormy, right? Yeah, we do that. Okay, well, he's blind, so do a strength check. 14. The old man wheezes a little as he attempts to hold on to the slippery long oar. His hands are brittle and weak, so you yank it away with ease. The force makes him wobble as you push his boat slowly away. He stares in your direction with great over lost eyes. You see a single tear streak down each cheek as he slowly fades into the fog. Throw the oar at him. I guess roll for strength again? Or accuracy, I think? 18. That's a hit, right? The oar glides gracefully through the fog and hits him square in the forehead, knocking him unconscious and pushing the boat over the edge of your visible horizon. And well, after that point, I realized I wouldn't be using my 8,000 word plan and I didn't really know my friends at all. In my most recent session, the leader of the town guard tried to poison us, assassinate us, and lead us into a deadly trap. I then spent a few hours in game beating his knees and ankles over and over again with a crowbar until he passed out, waited for him to wake up, and then did it again, calling him bitch boy the entire time. The DM said that I dealt him permanent dexterity damage. We were in a campaign in Sharn, City of Towers. It was the final showdown. 
The Lich had the MacGuffin. He was escaping in an elemental skiff. I was playing a teleporting ranger. I bamf onto the deck behind the pilot with our fighter, and he cleaves the poor devil in twain with his greatsword. The Lich hits me with some dark mojo. Without the pilot, the skiff starts to freefall amongst the towers and bridges. The fighter loses his footing, and the Lich blasts him off the deck. I start wrestling the Lich for the MacGuffin, because hey, he's a Lich. He can't be that strong. We're stalemated, though. Neither one of us can get the upper hand, and we're plunging to a fiery death. Then I get a hand free, pull out the immovable rod, and click the button. An immovable rod does just what it says on the tin, and I put it in between me and the falling Lich. The two of us were arrested in free fall, instantaneously. I critical the roll to hang on to the rod, though I dislodge my shoulder and take damage from the jolt. The Lich is hit dead center mass by a solid object at terminal velocity. It crushes most of the bones in his chest and rips through his back as he continues to fall. I have the MacGuffin and manage to bamf to the nearest bridge and collapse. He falls to the streets below on top of the exploding wreckage of the skiff. Moral, never let your players use physics. My first time playing D&D with a few of my friends who were also new. I decided I wanted to be a chaotic evil dark elf rogue with a short sword and hand crossbow. The story started as us being crew to a charming pirate captain and shipwrecking on a mysterious island. Our first battle was against some basic crabs and my newbie friend who was playing a druid decided mid fight that he wanted to tell the weather forecast for tomorrow, hoping that the information would somehow sway the crabs to forgive us for killing their children. <laughs> The DM took a long pause and informed him that tomorrow would be sunny. The crabs did not care. Later in the campaign, we found a village with no one in sight, so we decided to investigate. Me, being the sneaky rogue, decided to climb up on one of the flimsy thatch roofs to observe the town. My other comrades chose to walk straight in and make noises to wake the townsfolk up. While I was on the roof, fish people with flimsy weapons started to exit their homes to see who these strangers were. During my time on the roof, I decided to sneak down. I, however, failed my agility check and fell straight through where I was greeted by a female fish person holding her baby. Thinking quickly, I rushed the woman and held her child hostage at sword point, threatening her to be quiet. After a few minutes of observing the room and analyzing exits, a fish man came running in through the front door with a pirate's hat on. Now, rewinding a bit, let me fill you in on what happened outside. The fish people gathered in the square to investigate my party. After some brief arm flailing to communicate, our charming captain managed to convince the chief that we were all friendly and meant no harm. The captain gifted the chief his pirate hat as a sign of good faith. The chief was incredibly excited and wanted to show his wife that the visitors were friendly and had given him a wonderful new hat. Now, jump back to me. I didn't know what was happening outside. As soon as the chief rushed on through the door to see my holding his wife and child hostage, I reacted with a shot from my hand crossbow. I rolled a 20 and shot him square between the eyes with such force that his body was thrown out the door and his hat flew off his head. His wife screamed and rushed me. I threw the baby at her, which she caught, and then I leapt out the window only to find myself surrounded. My party then apprehended me and claimed I was a criminal they were hunting. The fish people took all of my weapons and armor, then locked me in a cage. Fast forward to the night, I escaped my cage, stole a knife, and brutally murdered the chief's child and wrote curses on the walls of the home using the child's blood. I waited outside the town while my party discovered the act, and the town erupted in panic, threatening to kill the newcomers for bringing this evil. They chose to flee without causing more harm. Fuck those fish.